Hi everyone, it's Andrew from NLC and I'm just going to do a quick little bench video just uh, I know we've been doing a lot of bench videos recently and sorry about that it's just that we spend a lot of time at the benches and not quite as much time out running um, however on my bench is the MC8 and what I'm about to do what I have done last night I should can't tell a lie I've done this already because if it didn't work I wasn't going to Oh, you. Uh, but I've put a Beck in my MC8, a BEC, battery elimination circuit, as it's called from the old days. Uh, but um, it, it basically helps out the servo um, get enough power, which the ESC can't do. So let's zoom in, let's get in close, and we'll have a little look uh, and see what's what. Which button is it then? This one. Here's all my gubbins, and here is the most important part, the back. And this is a cheap hobby wing run, one, it's uh, 6 volts only, doesn't go any higher than 6 volts, which is fine for me because my servo is only 6 volt servo. Uh, if you need a 7.4 servo, if that's what you're running, a big high powered one, uh, then you will need a, a, a back that does 7.4, otherwise, well, you're only going to give it 6 volts. Um, you know, which may or may not be what your ESC gives it. Now, I just wanted to have a little word, and this is at the risk of this video being 15 minutes long, as the other three takes have been. Um, a word about ESCs, and this is important, because it's at the root of my problem. Now, a typical crawler ESC, like the Quick Run 1080, fantastic ESC that we know and love, and I'm sure you guys have come across them before, pumps out of its own internal powerhouse what is it there six or 7.4 volts uh three amps right so its internal bec chucks out to the receiver that kind of poke which on the face of it should be fine for my six volt servo it's only going to ask for six volts and the, the the 1080 should be able to shove six volts through to it um However, I'm not running a 1080. I had problems, you know, I'm not running it because I'm running a, a brushed Holmes Hobbies motor. Okay, so I can't run a, a 1080, it won't accept it. I'm running a Castle Sidewinder 4 because these are a good pair and Holmes Hobbies recommended them together. But as, of, as it turns out, the Sidewinder 4, like the Sidewinder 3, only generates 5 volts. So the Sidewinder 4 cannot produce, the ESC is not producing enough power to give the servo what it needs okay so my basic problem let me try and write this down as a, as a sort of help uh, help us all understand so i've got my esc which is producing five volts and that is going into the servo which needs six volts and that was my problem that the servo was taking all the power and the truck was stopping or hesitating or jerking or losing control uh, and obviously resetting the, the ESC and, and losing connection to the transmitter. It was all getting to be a bit frustrating taking it out. Um, now, what we need to do, where does the Beck fit into all of this? And this is the bit I couldn't, I couldn't get a decent video of, a, a proper everyday video of, on YouTube. Um, I see lots of people wiring them up with pens in their pockets and voltmeters and stuff, which all just doesn't seem to be terribly appropriate and and you know what do you actually need hard to tell so what i've done what, what we're actually going to try and do here is instead of putting the, the battery over this side okay so at the moment the battery goes into the esc agreed the esc generates its power six volts 7.4 whatever and gives it to the servo amongst other things beautiful now our BEC is going to sit in here and we are going to take some of the battery feed so we're going to split the battery feed we're going to take a bit into the BEC and we're going to feed that directly to the servo and at that point and we're just talking about the power here we aren't doing that anymore and then what that is staggeringly important you will get the magic smoke if you get that wrong. You can't have power going this way and power going 
that way into this because some of this power will go back out of here and will fry that all right the ESC will go up and smoke the servo only gets power from one place and, it, and now it's getting it from the BEC. Okay. Obviously you still have to have um, a connector because you still have to have a signal. Okay. Because otherwise your servo doesn't know what the hell to do, right? So signal is still connected. Yeah. So we're still getting left. We're still getting the information left and right and so on, but the power is coming via the back. Okay, how can we represent power? Let's do it as a jagged line. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, art was not my strong point. And that takes a little bit of complicated wiring. So what I've got here, look at all this stuff. What I've got is my battery connector running straight off into the ESC. Uh, that's just, that tub is just to stop the, the, the cab from clattering down. Uh, this is the power, the battery gets plugged in here. And as you can see, I now have some spurs running off it to the back. Okay, there they are. So the back will get power as soon as I plug a battery in. I don't have an on and off switch on this rig. I've taken that off as well. Um, now what then happens is the back outputs it's power. Notice there's no white signal. Okay, it's not interested in what what the device has to do. It's only interested in power. So it's got the black and red running into a, a servo plug, and that red. If we follow the red cable, that's the most important cable. It runs up here, and guess where that goes? Into the servo. As you can see, the black cable is the servo cable. And my DW, my uh, PowerHD DW servo. So the red power cable runs through here and via the back. Okay, so the power is only going in that that route. Okay. Now, what else do we have here? We have to remember the signal still has to get through. Okay, the signal still has to get through between the ESC and the servo. And that's what this cable is. So what we have here is a triangle of cables. And this is the bit I never really got the hang of on any other video. There is a triangle. Look at this. A triangle of cables. So this is going to go into the receiver. I get my receiver. There's the there's my spare channel one at the top. That's difficult. I've got so many wheels. Everything gets caught up around a wheel. Um, so that goes in there, black out, and which is very a very appropriate little way of remembering which way to plug these in because that's what I was getting blackouts. So you have a triangle of cables connecting all these things together. So it's a bit like the diagram here. Yeah. So you've got a connection. You've got a triangle here. You've made a triangle out of these three items. All right, so that's what you need a three-way cable for. Now, the most exciting thing, was a little bit of soldering, and, and what I will, I'll, I'll put a picture on, the picture I used of, of uh, Google, which is really useful, a really simple way of illustrating this. But in the end, this is, these cables are available from Model Sport and, and various others online. Um, what are they called? I'll put some links in, uh, in, in under the video of, of them. And it is basically just a three-way triangle. You just got to make sure that you've got the right cables put in the right places. Now, I used something I had lying around. I've got a lot of these. I bought a load of these by mistake, thinking they were something else. Um, I didn't pay attention to the connectors. And what they are from eBay, you buy about 10 or 15 of them for, you know, not a lot, is a three-way splitter. And the three, the ones I've got, that I, I, I've got one, male end and two female ends okay and it's the three wire type so i just turned this into the thing i needed instead, instead of spending eight or ten quid online buying something i thought i'll just use this so all i've done on mine is i've just snipped out the the, the cables that were redundant so i just snipped the red out of both of these both ends 
and I joined these two. So the red does a loop like this. Yeah. So the back goes in one end, servo goes in the other. Okay. So the servo one you choose has all three cables. The one out of the back doesn't need a, a signal. So you cut the signal, you take the signal wire out, cut it out. And then at this end, which is the end that's going to go into your receiver, of course, that's the one you take the red out. But of course, by the time you've, if you've cut these and bridged them together on the red cable, then this red cable's dead anyway. It's never going to get a signal. But I've taken it out. Just I cut it right off here at, at, at this point, just to remind me, just so I didn't feel like I was like, accidentally going to fright myself stupid by thinking I had a live red cable going into the receiver. I don't. Okay, the red cable here, as you can see, is bridged between these two female um, pieces here. So I've got a ton of these. I would suggest you know you probably have a couple in your spares box if if, uh, but they're 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 pretty useful I guess for various purposes. But um, for me. So I like these for splitting lights, you know, if, only, if I've got one more set of lights, then I've got receiver ports. I'll plug that in the receiver and, and I've got two places to shove um, to shove my lights. So, um, yeah, customize this if you want, or obviously just solder your own up. But that's, that's how it's done. You've got a joint power cable back, just runs all the way through. From the battery connector and then you've got your signals uh your signal in your black cable obviously going through uh into your receiver so that's telling it what to do and the back is producing the power to tell it to, to to make that happen okay so i'll put the links in the in the description below i'll try and flash a picture up on the screen but uh also i'll put a link to the picture as well so you can get an idea in a simple version what this looks like um but it does all work. Let me just power it on for one second. Right, so now it's on. I'm plugged in. And everything's kicking. It's all peeping away and chirruping. Servo's creaking away as usual. Um, and I can turn the wheel. Okay. So the power is running through the back into the servo directly. Super duper. Obviously, I can't run this thing around on the bench because it's colossal. Um, but there you go. So the glitch buster will stick around. I might, I, I, if I need the extra port, I'll take it out. But I uh, might as well keep it in there for now. All right. I hope you found that reasonably clear and entertaining. Uh, it may not make it after I've watched it back. <laughs> if it's just bamboozling while I ramble on. Anyway, alright, thanks guys for watching us and sticking with us. Cheers.